Hi there, I'm Brian Whitmore, host of the Power Vertical podcast, and this is The Daily Vertical. So now we know that Alexei Navalny has a national network. This weekend, he demonstrated that he can put people on the streets in the thousands, not just in Moscow and St. Petersburg, but in scores of cities across Russia as well. He even put people on the streets in Dagestan. Think about that for a minute. We also know that Navalny isn't going away anytime soon. Every time Vladimir Putin's regime tries to suppress him and marginalize him, he seems to come back stronger. He's become the Kremlin's Freddy Krueger with a Twitter feed and a YouTube channel. Now we know there's a strong reservoir of discontent with an autocratic regime and a kleptocratic elite that's been in power far too long. Russians, it appears, are not immune to the anti-establishment wave that's been sweeping the West in recent years. And now we know that as living standards fall, the issue of corruption has taken on a broad and a deep resonance. In good economic times, Russians are willing to put up with a kleptocratic elite. In bad economic times, not so much. This weekend's protests, which were larger than anybody expected and the largest Russia's seen since 2012, came on the 17th anniversary of Putin's first election as president. The Kremlin is seeking to turn Putin's election to a fourth term next year into the coronation of an emperor. But Navalny is determined to spoil that script by stirring up a rebellion below the decks. And he seems to be turning into a greater threat to this regime than anybody had realized. Keep telling me what you think in the comments section, on the Power Vertical's Twitter feed, and on our Facebook page. I'm Brian Whitmore, and that was The Daily Vertical.